New videos every day. Hi, I'm Roddy Iglese. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist. And I'm Peter McCarthy. I'm a certified traditional naturopath. And this is Wake Up America. And today we have a very incredible special guest today. This is Dr. Rich Massey, and he is he practices in Fredericksburg here in Texas. And he is a, he's an MD, but he's an alternative directional kind of guy. <laughs> right? And he's got an amazing story to share with us. So how are you? Thank you for joining us today, doctor. Well, you're welcome. But I was saying this may be the wrong show for me because I used to make my living putting people to sleep in America. Ah, <laughs> so right. this is Wake Up America yeah. and before you were... An anesthesiologist. Oh, wow. <laughs> so. well, well, Rich, why don't you share a little bit about what it is that you now do uh, as uh, a practitioner uh, in the, in within... Uh, being both an MD and, a, and an alternative practitioner. What do you offer okay. your patients? And mainly what we do is sit down and work together and they share parts of their health journey with me mm -hmm. and I tell them what I've learned about taking care of health. Um, it's impressive what comes out of dialogues like that, uh -huh. as you all well know. Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. The more communication you have, two-way communication, the better you're able to help them, aren't, aren't you? Yes, and to me, the patient voice is really the voice that drives the system. When people come in and they have a healthcare challenge, that's what we're about, is becoming part of their work with that and helping them find a solution. And isn't that so rare today? I mean, you are actually coming from the old school doctor, right? The one who actually was part of the family and actually listened to their patients instead of having sort of today's system is pretty much a turnstile kind of operation. You go in, you see the mm -hmm. doc for 10 minutes, he writes, he or she writes a script and you're out the door, right, to the pharmaceutical company. Yes, yes. Andrew Wilde's written a lot about that and how few minutes are spent with people. And uh, I'm actually in trouble now with the medical authorities for listening to patients. Wow. Why don't you tell us a little more about that? I think our audience would be really interested to hear your story. Okay, well, on uh, on June 16th, I was returning from vacation and noticed that KXAN, a uh, news crew from Austin, was filming the front of my office with no one in it. Oh my God. And I got out of the car to talk with them, and they said, didn't you know your license was suspended three days ago by the Texas Medical Board? And uh, you've been declared a continuing threat to the public welfare. And uh, a few days later, that came out in my home paper, uh, as well as in some papers of other cities. And uh, the press releases were made without any evidence of any harm to anyone. Um, and the official evidence against me when we finally got it before the hearing uh, stated that patients have no say. Say that again. Patients have no say. How do they word that in the uh, in, in the documents that you saw? Patients have no say. <laughs> that's, Patients that's what have they said. no say. And so, so our situation was was unique. Uh, we have a small clinic. It's more like a family. People come and get IVs and nutritional consultations. Everybody knows everybody. And so, when this fraudulent complaint was made against me by a member of my own family. Uh, didn't have anything to do with the clinic. And the patients knew that, so they all got together and wrote documents to the medical board that, hey, we're doing fine, nothing bad has happened to our health, and we really don't want you looking at our private records, so we're going to take custody of them ourselves. And what did the medical board do? Well, that's why they took my license away, because my crime, my administrative crime, was to actually let the patients do what they wanted to do that broke the rules. Now, these are all private pay patients. There's no insurance or Medicare rules to be dealt with. And I tried explaining to the board that a lot of what we do is emotional counseling. We do things that are very personal that aren't medical. But I was not given the option of taking those things out of those records. 
they wanted to see everything about everybody. And uh, we just couldn't go with that. Now, let me ask you something. And there was there was a rumor going on. Um, Austin's a pretty small town and Fredericksburg is right out of Austin. And, you know, there's few and far between of docs like you. And I pretty much know them all. Mm-hmm. And um, I heard that you um, were arrested. Is that true? Yes, that actually happened. Uh, and we have not done a big investigation of this, but the timing of it is suspicious for me. And that the law enforcement is from the same town where the head of the medical board is a physician. And uh, if you look at her testimony, I would have to say that I agree that she committed perjury before the Texas legislature and having knowledge that her own husband, physician, called in anonymous complaints to the medical board against physicians who competed with her practice. Oh, Whoa. my God. So wow. when they now, usually it's my understanding, but I understand that that wasn't the case with you. Uh, usually when you arrest someone, you arrest them on charges. Were there any charges? No, I was arrested without charge and uh, <laughs> held for two days in a holding cell. And uh, my wife found a lawyer to get me out on a writ of habeas corpus. And this was about a a case that came up where apparently the law enforcement in Taylor County wanted me to testify against a family uh, who had the misfortune of having two boys with a severe immune deficiency. And uh, it was it was about end of life care. It's uh, that's the pharmaceutical industry's big money maker is end of life care. And they want people to be afraid to do anything other than put people in a hospital and use drugs on them at the end of their life. This is where people's homes are taken away. This is where they lose all their estate and all their property, which I hear is unique to America. Yeah, and in fact, uh, we read a study not too long ago sponsored by Harvard University that said that the number one cause of bankruptcy in the U.S., personal bankruptcy, is an in- inability to pay medical bills. Oh, how about that? Yeah. Now, yes. now, what what has happened since then, Rich? Now, I know you've been through a long and arduous journey uh, to get you to where you are today. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened after you were released from jail? Um, I, I think I had a, a nervous tick for quite a while. Uh, <laughs> can't say that I liked it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it kind of does uh, bring up fear issues that a person has inside. And uh, it's given me some respect for people that do the kind of work that you do politically. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want to know this kind of thing happened. I didn't want to know about it. I wanted to pretend like the authority people really are nice and they have our best interest in mind. And uh, I can't really honestly say that anymore. Wow. Well, you know, um, I have been working, I've been practicing for over 20 years and uh, for, for, for 12 years, I was associated with an MD here in Austin, similar to you. And, uh, last year I was also associated with another one. Um, you're wonderful to work with and you're, you're, you're so out of the box thinkers, but in all of my years in practice, being with the MDs like you, I have had long, lengthy conversations with these docs, and they are so under the radar and so afraid to do what their heart tells yes. them to do and to to naturally do what I think really, I think, I, and I'm going to be presumptuous in saying, but I, I hope that this is true, that every young man or woman who goes into medical school or goes into the healing arts goes in from their heart first. Mm-hmm. They don't go in from their pocketbooks and they don't go in from their mind. I'm going to, you know, do this. I'm going to take control. They literally have, I mean, there's other ways of making money, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, be a stockbroker, be a car salesman, be a whatever. But people who go into the healing arts go in there with the real heartfelt intention to serve. Mm -hmm. And when what I have noticed is with docs like yourself that go through eight years of grueling medical, and and the doc that I worked with said that the medical schools are really not designed for the for the right brain thinkers, the creative thinkers. Uh, Even the test to get into medical school is very left brain so that you can fit into the box that they want you to fit in. And then you get docs like you that are out of the box thinkers that actually Mm -hmm. make medical arts an art versus a science. 
because we are an art. The human being is unique. It Looks is an that individual, way to me. right? Looks that way to well, me. Well, you know, and, and you're absolutely right, Rodia. As I think both all three of us know, right down the road here from where we're filming this in Austin, Texas, um, there's uh, an organization located called the Biochemical Institute. And it was founded by Roger J. Williams, the famous Austin biochemist who, back in 1956, wrote a book that proved conclusively that we're all biochemically unique beings. Really? So hmm. what is it about, why, why are we treating populations? Why are we treating groups of people and making decisions, in some cases of, of life and death, based on this large of a population had this response to this particular drug, when they know full well that one person may have a potentially fatal reaction to that, that uh, treatment. You know, it seems to me like your way of treating, mm -hmm. your way of practicing medicine is truly the way that we ought to be doing things. So, you know, tell us though, and I think this is really kind of the $64 question for all of us there that uh, know you and mm -hmm. uh, the people that who are gonna be watching this video. What can people do to help preserve the right, your right to practice the way you are and the rights of other MDs? What, what can they do to help you? I think the big thing that's obvious for me right now is that people's voices have to be heard. Um, there's a response to people's voices, believe it or not, if we get out there and speak up. I was not speaking up about any of this. I was like your friends. I was under the radar. I didn't tell anybody anything. It was all word of mouth. And now I've been called out here into the open. They, they call me bad names in the paper, like uh, first grade or second grade. Is that what we used to do? Uh -huh. You're a you're a so-and-so. Yeah. And uh, so I've been called out to the playground to fight here now. And uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how to respond to that in a creative way. So we have a website now and we're doing podcasts. And the main purpose of that is for people's voices to get out. So we ask people their stories and they tell about how they get well outside the standard of care. Excellent. That's awesome. Tell, tell us about the standard of care. Well, you were just talking about biochemical individuality, but in the legislative world of medicine, the administrative law, there is something called the standard of care. And there is an expert that we don't know who that is or how he gets his money or who lobbies this person. But they sit in the back with the chart of the person. They never meet the patient. They don't meet the doctor. And they look through this chart and determine whether or not the standard of care is followed. And if it's not, you either get fined or you lose your license or some restriction happens to you. Um, I have this cartoon that goes through my mind that this is, you know, to uh, have this guy be the healer of the world. You know, all we have to do is get the chart of the person in the hand of the expert. <laughs> Let them lay hands on them, and suddenly the person turns well, you know. I just don't see how that's going to work, though. Well, this is really um, great information, and I really appreciate you for coming out here and really expressing this. I mean, <coughs> some of you may remember uh, Dr. Jonathan Wright, who, you know, yes. his ordeal uh, in Washington, this was like 15 years ago, uh, Dr. Jonathan Wright was doing, he's a brilliant brilliant MD and he was doing a lot of uh, practice very similar to yours and they actually went Gestapo like in SWAT teams in the middle of the day busted down his door instead of opening it it was open they literally yes. busted it down traumatized all of his patients in the waiting room yes arrested him uh, took his all of his um, records took his computer took his whatever without charge they had no charge yes and he went through, I don't, I, I'm wondering if he has recovered since then. Mm -hmm. And he is one of those sort of pioneer men like yourself that um, has been really victimized by this kind of strange mm -hmm. system, you know. He's one of my teachers, and I heard he just recently made a movie about all this called Let Truth Be the Bias. Wow. I'm wow. not sure how to, to get it, but I'm sure if you contact the Tahoma Clinic in Kent, Washington, they'll probably tell you how to get that movie. Wow. Um, so, folks, think about this for just a minute. I mean, you've heard this horrendous story, 
And every time we do one of these Wake Up America, America series, we do it with this American flag in the background. This flag means something. It means freedom. This is not freedom, folks. And the only way that we're going to be able to change how these people, these faceless bureaucrats, operate and try to intimidate with fear and violence and uh, confiscation, people like Dr. Massey, the only way we're going to change that is to let our voice, every one of our voices be heard. They can't stand the light of day. They cannot stand having people like you, like us, say the truth. So make sure that you get this video out to as many people as you possibly can. They need to hear Rich Massey's story. They need to hear the story of people just like him who are constantly living in fear that by doing the right thing, they'll be prosecuted. I do want to say this. Um, in the state of Texas in 09, we were coming up to the next legislative year. One of the things that the Texas Health Freedom Coalition is doing is we are getting a collection. Now, if you're in Texas, that's great. Um, if you're not in Texas, that's fine too. We are getting a collection of, as Dr. Massey has said, of people who have had success stories dealing with the uh, alternative or complementary or nutritional route. Um, this is what we're looking for. We're culminating letters, we're culminating uh, testimonies, and real stories of real people who have gone the alternative mm -hmm. route and have been healed. Some that have done it after the medical profession has given them up for dead. So we are looking for this kind of thing. We welcome your comments. This is not all about, you know, um, bashing the system and whatever. What we want to do here at Wake Up America is literally have this conversation and have the guts of mm -hmm. people like yourself to be willing now to come forth and to say, look, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Not so that we can just get angry at the system, right. but that we can change the system. And that's yes. what this is all about, is to enlighten you on the truth of what is happening and then ask for your stories. Because mm -hmm. when we go in front of legislature, when we go at that Capitol this year, we want wheelbarrows full of letters and cards saying, this is my story. This is what has helped me. All right. So this is what we're asking. If you haven't subscribed to Psyche Truth, make sure that you just push that little button and subscribe. Again, we welcome your comments. We thank you, brave doctors, from coming forth. It is Peter and I's goal and ambition to help MDs like you. Um, mm -hmm to help all of us, but especially MDs, because you are in sort of this category that you're, you're, you're bound. We, we're not licensed, so we're not bound by the TDA or the AMA or right. whatever. You know, we mm -hmm. don't have these, these locks and chains on our practice like you. So you're, you're great men and women. You have put you. forth a tremendous amount of your time and effort to, to serving the people. And we as people, we want to serve you. Thank okay. you very much. So thank you for joining us. Uh, stay tuned to uh, our next episode. We've got some exciting people coming up. We've got uh, Rick Jaffe. This is the author of Galileo's Lawyer. If you have not read that book, go to Amazon.com, Galileo's Lawyer. He is the number one lawyer who has tried and succeeded all around the nation in um in uh, trials dealing with doctors like you, dealing mm -hmm. with uh, the medical, the alternative medical MDs that have been crushed or tried to get crushed. So we're going to have him. We're going to have all kinds of different people coming on. So stay tuned and thank you for coming. Thank you a lot, folks. We sure appreciate you watching. Uh, stay tuned. We'll see you next time. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.